We're live. We are live. Oh, um, let's just see when our Facebook tells us to go live. <laughs> when do we get the old uh, 100 Not Out is live? Oh, 100 is. Not Out is live now. Got it, got it. That is so exciting. Uh, got it, got it. We love that. That's we love great. It. Hello, Facebook. Um, uh, the share with your friends. Oh, I've got to share this with my friends. I wish it just um, gave us... The uh, the ones that we'd normally share to, you know what I mean? Totally, um, totally. Just smash it into all the groups. Got, there's so many groups. <laughs> Who was that? Wendy Adams. Ah, <laughs> uh, and Summer. How fantastic! There we go. Well, the wellness crowd. I don't know who the wellness crowd is. Um, <laughs> We're probably double double posting. We could. Stu Crow's watching. Who? You're joking. That's amazing. Crowy. Stu Crow, one of the world's greatest human beings. <laughs> awesome. Summer Daly's here. Wendy Adams is here. Oh, good. We've got, a, we've got a corker of an episode today. We do. For people that love entertaining, edutaining episodes, it's going to be a belter. Episode 442. Yeah. Unbelievable. All right. Are you ready for it? Wendy. I just of Wendy. Summer. Hi, guys. Different day. That's true. Different day. Well done, Summer. Oh, Top of the class for you, shirt, Summer. Pretty shirt. Well done. Well, I'll tell you what, Summer, after your abuse that you gave me last week <laughs> and saying that you didn't like my shirt, I thought I'd better try something different. So I've tried something different. Hopefully you like this one, Summer. Now, just... just if you don't if like it, Summer, give me some suggestions. Just don't leave me out there hanging to dry. You've got to tell me. No, I've got to, I've got to mediate stripes? you too. I've got to mediate you too because Summer, that's <laughs> what we love about you, Summer, is you're quite direct. And Damo is, uh, I'm not going to say a little she bit. She likes this. No, she likes this one, which is he good. Just, that's good. He just, he, he takes a lot of things, not personally, it's not the right way. He's a carer. That's a good thing to say, isn't it, Damo? Damo is the, one of the most caring people you'll ever meet. So he does, he does, Thanks, he listens to the 100 Not Out community. So if someone says, I don't rate the shirt, Thanks. Thanks Damo is just. He's going to be a bit flat, but he's but he's he's, he's um very feminine. bouncing today. There we go. <laughs> that's, is that, what makes a shirt called? feminine these days? Yeah, <laughs> um, I think it's the flowers. I'm just having. I think it's the flowers. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Let's, get going. Purple, Let's get going. Let's get You're in pink. Here we go. Good work, Summer. <laughs> You've got Damo racking his brain over now. He's like, oh, I'm happy with feminine. That's all right. Too feminine, not feminine enough. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm happy with feminine. Here we no go. No problems. <laughs> Reminds me of a song. Huh? Huh? What song? <laughs> Am I not pretty enough? I love it. All right, here we go. Uh, I better hit record. <laughs> In three, two, and one. Hello and welcome to 100 Not Out, a weekly show dedicated to helping you master the art of aging well. This is episode 442. And gee whiz, folks, we've been waiting a long time, but for the first time in more than eight years, the number one wellness expert in the country is wearing a black shirt with flowers. He's looking a million bucks. <laughs> it's blue. He's Dr. Damien Christoph. <laughs> Hello, I'm colorblind. Hello, Damo. <laughs> Hello, PC. I thought I'd fem it up today. I thought I'd fem it up. I'd uh, I'd make it a little bit more pretty. Um, last week, copped a bit of flack for my shirt. I loved my shirt last week. Um, but uh, I thought I'd do something different this week. And th- so thank you so much for a little bit of Perth heat from you. Um, I'm... Um, I'm very happy with my shirt choice, as always. I only wear clothes yeah. that I like. So, um, great to be here with you, PC. Uh, great to see you wearing your customary T-shirt. Um, it's changed colour. Um, it's gone from white to grey. Purple, purple. purple. Uh, our, our, we're a bit colourblind today. Yeah, well, I am, I'm not, I am actually I am legitimately here. colourblind. For those of you who don't know, I have a red-green colour deficiency. And so, <laughs> um, when Marcus <laughs> sent me uh, your exceptional life book... Um, what I realized is that it wasn't printed in red. It was printed in blue. And uh, <laughs> someone had to tell me that. So, <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Or I was like, <laughs> why would you print it in red? Like you're not selling McDonald's. And, uh, and someone said, You are joking, right? You are joking? Because <laughs> I would believe you. I'm so gullible. Like, you'll never know. You'll never know, PC. No. <laughs> so, uh, I'll tell you really what, though. Really I'll tell yeah. you what, though. It's these sorts of conversations that will have us living a long time. I have to tell you that. And much. it's a it's a beautiful segue because yeah. uh, we have invited over the last few weeks uh, questions from the 100 Not Out community that you would like us to discuss 
on uh, the podcast. Yeah. And we've had an overwhelming response from one listener. Uh, we've got had a subdued <laughs> response from thousands of others. Uh, but we've had an overwhelming response from Pratesh, who is one of the 100 Not Out um, legends. He he engages, and Damo loves engagement. You know, Love podcasts, it. believe it or not, are not that easy to get engagement because many people right now they're going for a walk or they're driving the car, I and mean, we know how much money it costs to touch your phone whilst driving. Three hundred and fifty-two dollars. I found out the other week. So we <laughs> don't you? want. Did you anyone tell me more about that? I want to know about be, that. Did you no, just, did you get a fine? Look, I'm not dobbing anyone in, but all I'm going to say is it wasn't me, but the fine arrived at my address. So all... <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is thank Pratesh warmly for his question or questions that yes. have come through recently. And if you are so inclined to uh, just throw a grenade at us that we might want to yep. talk about for 20 yes. minutes, we love it. Like, drop us a bomb that yep. you think would stimulate a conversation. And yep. Pratesh has dropped a fabulous, fabulous conversation grenade into the 100 Not Out inbox today. Yep. And this is the question. Morning, fellas. Got another question for you. Thank you. The inner geek is asking, love can you it. please explain the biochemical science involved in longevity? What hormones slash chemicals in our human body promote longevity and how do we support the natural production of these chemicals on a long-term basis? Your enlightenment is much appreciated, Pratesh. Damien Christoph, I have no qualifications outside of journalism at RMIT, class of 2002, to answer this question, so I'm going to default to the chiropractic, naturopathic, wellness guru that you are, qualified wellness expert. What's your immediate answer to Pratesh's hard-hitting question? <laughs> This is the best. This, what say you? What say you? Uh, I concur, Doctor. Uh, so <laughs> what I want to say to this, Pratesh, and it, firstly, thank you so much because it is a great question and, uh, and I do love it. And, and it's, it's definitely go, coming into the process of recording 100 Not Out, I had hoped that we would glean that information too. So along the way, we've definitely... Um, been exposed to different theories and to different approaches to longevity. Ravi Rudna has uh, suggested that it's ketones, um, and and that's possible, <laughs> especially exogenous ketones, ones that are manufactured from E. coli, I think is a good idea. Um, and Julie Hill also thinks that this is an amazing question, so thank you. I'll see if I could do two things at once and put uh, Julie's question up and Ravi's answer up at the same time while I'm actually talking. But there's a few things that we might consider. One would be, how do we achieve longevity? Uh, there's a, a couple of approaches to achieving longevity. One would be the avoidance of chronic disease. Does anyone else think that Marcus is distracted? Oh, no, he is listening. Oh, no, no, okay. no, I'm researching. I'm just getting oh, right, okay. to, to, to bring okay, into the cool. conversation. So you with me. Good, great. Yeah, I'm with you. Sorry, sorry to, sorry to do that. Um, so do we, is, the, is the art to... Um, Surviving life and to going beyond what will be our uh, expected age um, at the time of birth is the secret to that the prevention of chronic disease. So heart disease, diabetes and cancer, they're the chronic diseases or autoimmune disease. That's kind of what we're talking about these days. And so I would say that that's one thing that could contribute to you living a long time, the avoidance uh, and the purposeful avoidance of chronic disease. I think that's that's a worthwhile pursuit. Um, and then the other thing uh, would be, you know, based on observation, and this is purely observation, um, and then you could then potentially look at the research done by Dan Butner with the Blue Zones, and then consider the various factors that Marcus and I have spoken about over the years with regards to longevity in the countries that experience the greatest amount of longevity um, that are known as the Blue Zones. Um, they probably wouldn't be looking for a bi for a chemical or a biochemical reaction or a hormone per se they would be looking at a lifestyle so we go okay so if you can avoid the the chronic health conditions that we concern us the most that knock people off prematurely if we can avoid those things um and then we have a lifestyle uh, that it embraces the values of longevity that we've spoken about with regards to ikaria okinawa uh, sardinia and so on and so forth. Like if that's if you can 
bring that into your lifestyle, then you're giving it the best nudge. In terms of the chemicals involved in that, we can talk about some of the things that people have said along the way. So we might look at oligomeric proanthocyanidins or OPCs, and you'd find that um, in red wine, um, in the grape the grape seeds and the and the skins of of red wines you know so there's there's that you can also find opcs in pine trees um but you know do you have to cut down pine trees and get the you know the pine bark and crush it down and make a tea out of that in order to live a long time i think the science is you know light on in that regard and that would be moving down the route of an anti-inflammatory antioxidant kind of model so then you might look then at vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D, um, and other types of antioxidants that could decrease your exposure to oxidation. But let's face it, if we surround ourselves in an environment that's got lots of oxygen in it, which is important to life, we are going to experience oxidation. That's It's just part of what's going to happen. So do we want to block oxidation? I don't know. Like, to some extent, we need oxidative processes and inflammatory processes to take place in order to knock off the bad guys. You know, for example, cancer. Like, cancer cells are circulating around in most people's bodies all of the time, or precancerous cells, you could actually say, and our immune system, for the most part, will get on top of most of those, and it does that through an inflammatory process and an oxidization process. And so if we go for antioxidization all of the time, then we may not be enhancing our body's ability to manage an appropriate response to knocking off uh, these cells, which would initiate cell apoptosis to knock things off, right? So that's what we kind of want to have happen. If we go down the route of, say, anti-inflammatory, we might look at things that might drive inflammation. And one of those things that's quite common around that would be insulin and insulin as a hormone that we make in our body. Um, we want to use insulin efficiently. And so there's a push then from a medical perspective or from a drug-based perspective to use the pharmaceutical drug metformin. And so some um, practitioners are using the prescription of metformin to enhance the way in which we might actually use sugar and make more bioavailable sugar to our body um, and then less insulin um, resistance so that we're preventing diabetes and all the complications associated with insulin resistance and diabetes um, such as syndrome x and um, different types of cancers and of course heart disease so some people say that the cure of all ills will be the avoidance of insulin um, resistance in our body so that's one model Um, But then there might be the cardiovascular model and cardiovascular fitness. And so you might want to run with Ravi um, and go, you know, do your super marathons and all those sorts of things, um, or just take on a slow jog that often looks like a walk when it's played at full speed um, on a video camera. Um, That's me. Do me. Come with me for that This is fine. (laughs) This is totally fine. So what, what we need to be considerate of is that there's all these different approaches to longevity, but not one of them has shown to work on every single person. And this is really important to remember, Pratesh, because at some point, people have thought they found the elixir to longevity, the elixir to life. Um, And I think we've found it. It's in Ikaria, uh, and we all need to live in the little town of Nas. But I don't know whether or not if we all moved over there, all one million of us listeners, uh, 100 Not Out, if all one million of the listeners of 100 Not Out moved to Ikaria, um, Ikaria would not be the Ikaria that it is Mm. today. So it may not offer longevity anymore. So there's lifestyle, chemical, et cetera, et cetera, different approaches. I love everything about that answer. And hopefully to Pratesh and everyone watching and listening to this, uh, the answer is that there is no one answer in terms of what hormones or what chemicals in the body can we relate to longevity because there, there's all of those hormones and chemicals can relate to many things in, in living. So as Damo was talking about, I wrote down a number of different, made a number of different notes as Damo was talking about, as Damo was talking, Pratesh, a number of, your like your curiosity i think will be appeased in the first 20 odd 21 pages of the blue zones i know pratesh at the moment demo you're very supportive of my book but pratesh does send me little messages of him reading the book and taking quotes out of there so i think the book is stoking the fire of his curiosity at the minute which is great but i think the first 22 pages of the blue zones yeah where they ask experts about you know how um you know uh, is there a, a multivitamin for longevity 
Um, does going to the gym help? What's a smart diet for longevity? Is there a pill that can extend life? I think what we need to recognize is there are certain, like any diet, I don't know if Damo said this before or after we hit record, but just like in diet uh, where there's always a trend or a fad, longevity is a mega trend around the globe. So it is filled with fads. And I can share, I can share just some of them with you right now. Um, when I first read uh, Healthy at 100 in 2010, there's talk in here about iron and heme iron, like uh, heme iron and non-heme iron. Yep. And I remember when Damo said at the beginning of his answer that he thought he would come to the conclusion of you know hormones and chemicals within the body that are responsible for longevity. Um, there are so many you know chemicals, or whether it's a- antioxidants whether it's certain foods that help prevent dementia, there is so much in 100, um, in Healthy at 100 that can stoke the fire of that curiosity. But I don't think there's anything in there um, from a hormone or chemical perspective that makes you go, that's the one. Mm-hmm. What I would say, which is mentioned in the introduction here, and I think is really what Bruce Lipton comes along to, is that the biology of belief, which and belief is not a hormone and belief is not a chemical, Belief, in my mind, is is the chemical to longevity. Um, the reason why I say that is looking at the people that we've interviewed, they have all had some form of um, belief system that they would make the rest of their life the best of their life. We interviewed Ada Murky's demo, and she's like, you've just got to have a little spark, even if you're walking through the Siberian forest and it's the middle of winter and it's minus 30 degrees and you've been ripped away from home. You have to have a spark that your life could get a little bit better. Yeah. This is the stuff that Bruce Lipton talks about scientifically in the biology of belief. Like if you're in an environment like a Siberian desert, Well, are you at the mercy of your genes or are you at the mercy of something greater than your genes? And really, that's something greater Mm -hmm. is your belief. Um, I love that. People I wrote, yeah. How good is Bruce? How good is Bruce? People like Alice Hertz-Sommer, the oldest survivor, female survivor of the Holocaust before she died, age 110. She swam every day in the public pool until she was 97, but she also had a cancerous... um, she had bowel cancer, which she had removed. I think she was in triple figures by then. Um, so she may have had biomarkers mm-hmm. that we might say are biomarkers for longevity that mm-hmm. she may have been failing at because she had cancer in her body. But I think at the age of which she had a tumor removed out of her body, I believe that it was her belief mm-hmm. that allowed her to survive and, and thrive even in her later years. It could have been, um, it could have been urine therapy. <laughs> there's a lot of urine in swimming pools and she there swam is. a lot she swam a lot a lot and then the other, the other thing is um <laughs> d martini Possible. talks about inspiration as a nutrient for longevity and i think a lot of the guests that we interview on 100 not out uh inspired human beings we yeah. just interviewed bianca adkins from the lemonade crew the other day How we challenged that? her she, there's been some, some great the... feedback about that absolutely Ooh, amazing you know, brought people um, to tears that one that was incredible yeah, pretty much including you and I. Her husband, uh-huh. Maddie, diagnosed with MND at age 39. Uh-huh. And Go back to listen to that one. More inspired and happier than they've ever been in their whole entire life. And that's no word of a lie. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, I think the nutrient, you know, of, of inspiration and belief, because if you go down that rabbit hole of, of hormones and chemicals and biomarkers within the body, you can get every blood test under the sun. Mm. But I don't think that can... Um, I don't think life was made in order to be that complex and complexity is the enemy of progress and I probably would say complexity is the enemy of longevity mm-hmm. um, because we cannot sustain that level of complexity for our whole entire life. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I, yeah, I think there's a bit to be said in that because you think about those people that have hunted longevity, like they've literally purposefully hunted longevity um, so they've done the things to buy a hack, whether it be veganism, vegetarianism, um, whether it be... Um, 20 different multivitamins or pills or potions. Yeah, the Atkins diet, whatever it is, um, Pritikin diet, all those sorts of things. And we've been through this before. You've spoken about it, PC, and I love the way you just recount all these people that you know invented these eating programs that promised longevity and had the solution to you know <laughs> aging and oxidation and insulin resistance and all that sort of stuff. All of those approaches have 
have been written by people that died young. That's um, correct. And we still haven't found a centenarian v- vegan who has been a vegan for the whole of their life. Mm. That still hasn't hasn't been done yet. So if you want to be that person, can't wait to see it happen. But uh, that'll be interesting. But Or you so, might have to give birth to that person. <laughs> True. The 100-year experiment. Ooh. There'll be someone that would do that, honestly. I'm not saying that to be cheeky. There'd mm. be someone that would be determined to do it. There's so many different experiments that one can take. But um, mm. Would a vegan have exogenous ketones? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Ravs. I don't know. Um, PC, I think it's a really important uh, thing that we talk about because people are always looking for the silver bullet. Re- remember when chiropractic first got going? Um, you, you you won't remember the time, but you remember reading about it um, because back in 1895, Dee Palmer um, corrected a subluxation in the janitor's neck, Harvey Lillard, and mm. Harvey Lillard was deaf at the time. And when he racked that bone back into place, as the document would say, um, Harvey Lillard's hearing was restored. And so this, the silver bullet, the magic bullet that was um, arrived at at that point in time in 1895 was that chiropractic was the cure for deafness. And mm. so around America, Dee Dee went in his horse and cart um, trying to correct people's deafness um, through adjusting their spine. And not one person... Not one other person had their deafness restored, um, according to um, the books. Maybe it happened, but we'll never know because it wasn't recorded. Um, but other people noticed that other things had happened that had improved in their health and well-being. And so again, N equals one. What might be right for you, PC, in terms of what's going to keep you alive, might be different for me. Uh, which is another N equals one, and every single human experience is different on the planet, which is really important for us to to um, be cognizant of and mindful of because my nutritional insufficiencies might be different to your nutritional insufficiencies. The way in which you use coconut oil could be different to the way in which I use coconut oil. Oh, it definitely oil. would be. <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm just thinking that everyone's going to be a little bit different. But if you dedicate your life to living a long time, you may actually miss out on the enjoyment of living a long time. So mm. I would encourage you to live a long time. I've got a question for you. Mm. I've got my answer. I'll probably give you my answer in my question because I'd love to know your answer. Okay. Because there are, like, this isn't going to go go away. And I just want to, and I say this, I don't say it with judgment. I say it with a lot of love, but also awareness for people. Yes. There's a lot of research going into longevity in the medical profession. When I say medical profession, I probably really specifically mean the research profession with the chief aim to deduce um, a, a, something that they can only do, which is a drug, mm-hmm. um, in order to then distribute that to the population and and i'm not saying that to be negative but there's a commercial reality behind the research in 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 um in life in history longevity is not really commercial you could argue that it's commercial perhaps for governments particularly these days because we can keep people alive and people can earn money and pay taxes out of longevity and all of the rest of it mm-hmm. but what i would like people to think about is Most of us on this podcast are going to be aware that diets are a great business model, but they're not great for health and wellness. As Dan Buettner has said before, gyms are a great business model, but exercise has been a public health failure, like 20% of the population exercise, right? So let's just get clear about this. If I asked you, Damo, about longevity and what you think might be the next big wonder pill or wonder drug that society is going to be hit with uh, in, with the potential for it to be monetized on mass mm-hmm. what do you think it will be or maybe you might say it is right now <laughs> maybe it's already here I, I'm, I i thought i had to do this like on the first episode of the year like pre- do the predictions thing oh the predictions yeah yeah well, well so yeah. so Mine is resveratrol for what it's worth. I still okay. think they're trying to go hard on resveratrol, resveratrol. as yeah. a when I'm like, can we just drink more wine? But uh, <laughs> but but resveratrol is still in my mind. They're trying to eke everything they can out of resveratrol being the the wonder drug or the wonder nutrient for longevity. And they'll talk about telomeres and they'll talk about you know, DNA and they'll really maximise it to within an inch of its life. 
You may have already given your answer earlier with Metformin because I almost feel like Metformin is still a snowball that's still growing in the, yeah. oh, Metformin will, will make you age well. Yeah. Um, well, I would think that if they're going to go somewhere, given um, the observations um, of the last couple of years with the way in which people have actually um, gone from a, a mood and health perspective, I think they might be looking more at ways in which they can elevate serotonin or make serotonin stick oh, around for longer. Yeah. So yep. they might move away from an inflammatory model um, and towards a happiness model. So they as might... in happiness equals longevity, and yeah. here's a here's a neurochemical that will help you be happier. And we've popped it into this adaptogenic mushroom, hot chocolate, and yep. away yep. you go. Yeah, and so you're yep. seeing serotonin labs and serotonin conversations and serotonin tattoos, and so you're seeing a lot of people kind of going through that process of how do I um, get more serotonin in my lifestyle. So is that telling more jokes? Is it laughing more? Is it watching happy movies? You know, do I need to watch reruns of Patch Adams? Like, how am I going to get happiness hormones running through my body? Serotonin is that hormone, right? So um, I think that people will seek serotonin more when we get out of uh, what this is. And so from a pharmaceutical perspective, as Summer says, SSRIs, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, that would make serotonin stick around in our body for longer. But again, I don't think that is the answer, having serotonin stick around for longer. It's about how do we make more without eating more? Because we know that when we eat food, we get serotonin release, mm. um, but there's gotta be other ways in which we can get serotonin. So we might start to see that um, exercise physiologists start to talk about the manufacture and the production of serotonin. We might see that um, healthy food companies are saying this food is linked to the increase in hormones um, you know, of happiness. Uh, we might see yep. people eating foods that are richer in tryptophan um, so that they can increase their manufacture of tyrosine um, so that they can make more serotonin. So it's, you know, we might start to see this sort of thing happening. Um, and if I was to predict something um, that's different because metformin is not different anymore. Um, resveratrol has been around since the early 90s, since I, was started, when, since I started studying naturopathy and it hasn't really got there yet. Um, the microbiome is being linked to serotonin manufacture. So we might find that there's a, a probiotic that's linked to serotonin. Um, and so we might actually find there's a, 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 a probiotic that you can take that could elevate and lift your serotonin manufacture. We, we might see mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Fascinating. I reckon Pratesh would be very happy with this episode. I feel like his bucket will have been filled. Filled. I reckon his question feels well and truly answered. And if he's so inclined to go and read some books and do some research, this has been a fabulous contribution to one listener's question. Yeah, thank you, Pratesh. We do love it. And if you've got questions, fire them through. Send it to marcus at marcuspierce.com.au um, or do it on our socials. Do that. If you're going to go to uh, Marcus's website, make sure you stop by and buy a book. It's very important. Um, <laughs> he's got bills to pay. He's got four four <laughs> little mouths to feed, little sparrows. Um, oh, hungry at plus the moment, a mother sparrow. I tell you. Um, there's a lot of mouths to feed in that household. So buy some books, yeah. get them out there, buy gifts. It's a great Christmas gift for your friends and family. Start thinking about that. Christmas is just around the corner. Father's oh, Day. Don't remind this people weekend. what is it? September, October, November, December. It's only about 110 days to Christmas. Jeepers. Uh huh. Hey, um, and also on the socials, you can send a question through if you're on Facebook at 100 not out, just spell it all out, or at 100, 100.not out on the Insta, yes. and you can pop your question in there, and we will happily dedicate some time to it um, if we see fit yes. on an episode of 100 not out. But there are no bad questions. Um, it's always nice to know what our community is thinking and what you're wondering about and what you're curious about, and uh, hopefully protection the wider community has enjoyed this conversation today yes and if you are interested in more serotonin and you like to listen to two blokes ramble on about absolutely jack all <laughs> not marcus and myself even less so than marcus and myself two blokes who talk about nothing BTD. and you're thoroughly entertained for 20 to 30 minutes sometimes 40 minutes once or twice a quarter um listen to before the dip that's a great podcast a little shout out before to Ravi the dip. Muzza. well done and Maza. good work guys uh for more info on demo head on over to damienchristoff.com myself marcuspierce.com.au thank you to everyone who makes this podcast possible joseph tomo our editor our wider 100 not out community and until next week continue to make the rest of your life the best of your life bye for now
Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Seinfeld. What summer day? What summer saying? Seinfeld? Seinfeld. You know, for laughing. Oh, laughing. Yeah, yeah good, 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 yeah. good. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah. how good is that show? Well done. Cheesy Thanks reminds you. me of you. Oh, he reminds me of you too. <laughs> 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 I think that's so funny. Oh, it's so it's good. So funny. Has anyone ever watched Ted Lasso? What do you reckon? Are we getting any love in the Facebook? Uh, yeah. Uh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Uh, I love no. it. I love Ted. Anyway, Lasso. Apple TV, guys. Apple TV. Yeah. Ted Lasso. Apple Plus. Um. All right. That's the right summer. You'll like it. All right. Over and out. Facebook. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Trudy Have loves a great it. Week. Trudy Lasso. loves. Ted Lasso. Oh, Rhonda, she has a habit of coming on just at the end. Oh, help me, Rhonda. Can you come yeah, on right. earlier? Come help on. Help me, Rhonda. Help, help me, Rhonda. <laughs> All right. Uh, and See Cindy. Yeah. Such a oh, great name. Cindy. Are you joined just at the end too, Cindy? Yeah. We're Cindy just about Port. to leave. Cindy Port One. I love that. I wonder How what... nice is that surname? I just yeah. love that surname. I wonder what her grandfather did. <laughs> I love it. And what did Ravi's grandfather do? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they, uh, maybe they dropped one of the D's. Maybe it should be Rudder. I don't know. Or Runner. 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 Oh, maybe he's a Runner. Yeah, runner. Ravi would love that. Oh, he Ravi would. would love he's that. He's a Runner. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. All right. Great. Catch that. Dad jokes got to leave quick. We're going to start telling some shocking. <laughs>